Good afternoon students, myself Amina Rahana, Assistant Professor, Department of English and today our topic of discussion is Inflectional and Derivational Affixes. And as you know, inflectional affixes, uh, morphemes and derivational morphemes are a part of morphological process in English grammar or English linguistics. Inflectional uh, morphemes are inflectional morphemes are the suffixes attached to the root word. For example, boy, if s is added, it becomes boys. And what is the difference between inflection and derivational morphemes as the morphological processes? Derivational morphemes are uh, something that is to be added to the root word, but it changes the grammatical class. Here inflection morphemes does not change or never changes the class of that grammatical category of that particular word. So here boy becomes boys, it, there is a slight change of becoming a singular to plural. But in case of derivational morphemes, derivational morphemes are the uh, affixes or suffixes added to the root word and it changes the grammatical category of that word. For example, when a noun is changing into an adjective. So, noun can be changed into an adjective. Derivational morphemes, example, lucky is added with un. Okay. Lucky means uh, lucky, he is lucky. That means uh, he is lucky when we say the, like that, uh, it means it uh, is an adjective. And unlucky, unlucky means it is it changes its class because it gives gets a negative meaning. Okay, it's a positive meaning. It has a positive meaning, but when we add this prefix to this word lucky, uh, it becomes a negative word. Okay, then we are going to discuss more examples. Uh, then we are going to discuss more examples on inf inflectional morphemes. When we talk about inflection morphemes and derivational morphemes, inflection morphemes are very few in number just like as for 8 in number, okay, as for 8 in number, only 8 inflectional morphemes are there. But in case of derivational morphemes, they are numerous, okay, different, uh, different words belonging to different uh, category that means grammatical category but here only we will have we have uh, it inflectional morphemes and let's see what are they and the first inflectional morpheme is plural morpheme plural morpheme as we have seen in the example like a boy boys cat cats that means these are the words added to the root word or the, the letters or inflectional uh, affixes added to the root word so the letter which adding to the root word is known as inflectional affix inflectional affix and the next category is 
Next category is possessive morpheme. Yes. Possessive morpheme. For example, I am taking the same word boy. Okay. How uh, can we show the uh, possessive case of uh, boy? That is, usually we will use boy plus an apostrophe s. Boys. It shows the possession of a particular person or something for something. Okay. Then the third category is. Yes, next is present tense, present tense, third person, singular morphine. Present tense, third person, singular morphine, that is for example, uh, yes, example. Take the case of the word verb like sing plus s sings and when we apply this case in this word we should get uh, this form and what is the present tense third person singular morphine uh, when we describe it when we have uh, can you tell me what are the third person singular words third person singular for example he she it right okay and see he sings she sings or it sings when we talk about animals or pet animals we will call them as or address them as it okay even though they have uh, life see he sings, she sings, it, uh, it sings and here the rule is all these uh, subject, uh, all these uh, words given in the uh, beginning of this uh, phrase are known as the subject and the subject is a singular, okay, third person singular and the other persons in, uh, in our grammar, grammatical reference are I first person, you second person third persons are to be noted like this okay and uh, then it is when the subject is third person singular and shows or uh, do uh, something in present situation it should be noted uh, like this the verb should be added with an s to show the identity of that particular person and also the time in which the action is taken place okay so the rule is applicable here present tense third person singular morphine and what is the morpheme here? This S. Clear? Okay. Then next category. Next category is progressive morpheme. Progressive morpheme. And what do you mean by progressive? What is an action that shows a progression or continuity? So, when we add the progressive morpheme with this word, ing should be known, ing should be given. So, it becomes play and this ing shows the continuity or the progression of that particular action done by a subject. Okay. And there are so many words like you can form some words like this, uh, playing, singing, uh, kicking. Okay, running, hatching, etc. Okay. Then the next category past tense morpheme. Past tense morpheme. Example play. The word is added with ed to show it as played or to show it is in the past tense okay and there is another feature for this verb that it is a direct verb 
and in case of indirect verb when it is uh, noted in uh, past tense we will add with eat eight but what is the difference there is no morpheme is added there is no morpheme is added okay so only those words which has an addition like this is known as past tense morpheme the words are added to the other particular words uh, added to that per, uh, root word is known as inflectional affix inflectional affix okay and again next category sixth category is past participle morpheme past participle morphemes are uh, for example when uh, a word uh, is added to that particular morpheme eat eat eaten eaten this is the past participle form of that verb okay so this is the past participle morpheme or the inflectional affix uh, added to that root word clear next one comparative morpheme comparative morpheme for example tall taller this is the comparative morpheme to show when we make some comparison with uh, one person with another person uh, we use uh, this type of words okay he is tall and he is taller than his brother so er is added to show the comparison okay so this is known as this part is known as the inflectional affix or inflectional morphy okay then the last one superlative morphy example tall taller tallest tallest so this is known as the uh, superlative morpheme or the inflectional affix added to that root word and then one more example uh, big bigger biggest very good. biggest now we have uh, come across uh, what are inflectional morphemes okay there are eight types of in inflectional morphemes as uh, we have already seen uh, eight in number and they are plural morpheme possessive morpheme uh, third person singular morpheme present tense third person singular morpheme then pro uh, past tense morpheme progressive morpheme uh, comparative morpheme and superlative morpheme Okay, that's all about inflectional morphemes in uh, linguistics. Thank you.